If you're like me and you love building websites, it's very easy to get tunnel vision and just jump straight into the design, the layout, however everything is going to look and accidentally, unintentionally make some very common web design mistakes that will impact your future SEO efforts. So I wanna make sure that you're able to take a minute and take a step back and actually look at this website design with strategy so you don't accidentally make some of these very common mistakes. Now, I separate these nine different mistakes into a few different sections. First, I look at what is the website's solid foundation? How are we actually piecing this website together? Because everything we do is going to build on this foundation. Next, I wanna look at who are we actually building this website for? Because that actually is going to impact your SEO. And lastly, we're gonna look at what you wanna make sure you are not doing on your website, specifically as you build it. So let's dive into this first section. This is where we are starting with our solid foundation. So a couple of things that are gonna go into this because Google has told us we need to have a fast loading website. And while there's a number of things that we can do, two of the most common mistakes that I see are first, are not using a quality host, and second, using a slow theme. So a lot of times what happens is we put together a great website, we're very happy with it, but then we run it through some free tools like Google PageSpeed Insights or GT Metrics, and they tell us that our website is not loading quickly. Well, then we're going back and we're trying all of these different fixes, but we're only getting so far. And when that happens, a lot of times it comes down to the theme and the hosting. And those two can literally prevent you from being able to have the fastest loading website that you can. And the slower your website is, the less profitable that website is going to be. So we wanna make sure that we set the website up with a solid host that is not gonna slow our website down, that it has enough resources, and also that our theme is not so bloated that it's going to be slowing us down. Now, as we go through here, I am gonna be mentioning different tools, different resources, and I'll put a whole list of all of the resources together for you in the description so you can find those. Now, moving on to the next section. If you want your website to be successful, you wanna make sure that you are really taking the time to figure out who your users, your target audience is going to be. What are their needs? What are their wants? What are their problems? What solutions are they looking for? Because you wanna make sure that the copy is speaking to that. You wanna make sure that one, you are writing content that is going to be ranking, that is targeting that target audience because if you are bringing in all this SEO traffic, but it is not the target audience that you are looking for, well, that traffic is going to be useless for you and your website is not going to be as profitable as it could be. So that is why it's so important to make sure you are understanding who that target audience is specifically. So not only can you build the content around it, but you can build the website around it. You may have a different design, a different color scheme based on who your audience actually is and the copy that you are going to be using for your buttons, for your menu, for your call to action. Those can differ depending on who your audience is. And the longer that visitors stay on your website because they see themselves there, they see that you understand the problem, you may have this potential solution for them, the better that is going to be for SEO. And when Google sees that someone has clicked on your search result and they go to your website, they look at it and then they hit the back button and go to someone else's site, they know that that means likely you didn't have enough valuable information on that web page, and that's a problem for your SEO. Now, another very common mistake that I see from web designers is prioritizing design over content and user experience. It is so easy to get excited about building this new website. What's it gonna look like and how we're we gonna make it look better than the rest. And oh, we wanna make sure that everyone is happy with this design, but we did not take at least, if not more time, considering the user experience, how easy is this website for someone to actually use, and the content of the website, which goes back to my last point. So the content is actually what is gonna keep people there. The content is what is actually going to do the selling for you, not as much the design. The design can get in the way of user experience and content. So we wanna make sure that those are just as much, if not more of a priority than the design itself, which I know is hard when you're a web designer. The whole goal here is to make our websites as profitable as possible, not as pretty as possible. 
Now, another huge mistake I see, and this really comes down to just a lack of understanding of what needs to happen on these pages and really the importance of these pages. And these are adding some of the core pages that every website of every type out there really needs to have. So these are pages like your contact page, your about page, which are ones that people do typically add in, but you want to make sure that you have really gone in depth, that you have created really solid and complete pages and not just thrown something basic together. Some of the other pages that are incredibly important are privacy policies, terms and conditions, those disclaimer pages, which are incredibly important. And I know that is an area that a lot of web designers aren't familiar with. And I've recorded a whole video about how to get up to speed on that really quickly, how to make that really easy for you and make sure that your websites are protected. But also Google's looking at, is this a real website? And real websites are going to have all of those core pages. And speaking of content, you want to make sure that you are not producing a lot of pages that have what is called thin content. Thin content is where you just don't have enough content on the page. Usually these are 300 words or less. These are just very brief pages. Ideally you want your pages up to a thousand words or more, really not to add in a bunch of fluff, but to make sure that it is really complete everything that you're talking about on that page and a user is going to find everything that they need. Now, sometimes that doesn't work if you have a contact page or a quick opt-in landing page or something like that. But for most of your pages, your posts are gonna to want to have more content in there to make sure it is as valuable as possible. But more important than the word count is absolutely, is the visitor finding everything that they need on that page or post. Now another really big one, and this is one that I experienced with some of the sites that I have taken over, is that they have a lot of orphan pages and they do not spend enough time building internal links. An internal link is simply linking from one page on your website to another relevant page on your website. So what happens is, if you're building out these pages, but they're not being linked to from the menu, there's no other pages on the website that are linking to that page, that creates a page that just exists by itself. That's why it's called an orphan page. And that means that it's gonna be nearly impossible for visitors coming to your website to find those pages, but it's also going to be really hard for Google to crawl your website and find those orphan pages because they're going through the different links on your page. So you wanna make sure that every page that you're creating that you are linking to at least a couple other relevant pages, link to it where it makes sense, and also look for opportunities to build internal links and not just for SEO, look at it in terms of what relevant content would be helpful here for someone reading the site. What can I link to that would provide them even more information on this topic or help answer another relevant question? Now the eighth common web design mistake is using bad URLs. And this is easy to do if you just rely on the default. So if you are using WordPress, for instance, they don't have very user friendly or SEO friendly URLs. So you wanna make sure that you change that setting. But even as you create new pages and new posts, you wanna take a look at the URL that it gives you because it is pulling from the title that you are giving the page or post. And so this often creates a very long URL. So shorter URLs are often more effective and you wanna make them descriptive as well. If this is location-based, add in the location, but just keep it short and simple. And the ninth most common web design mistake that I see is not removing the no index tag once you take a site live. I have seen this so many times where we go into WordPress, we click the box to discourage search engines from crawling and indexing the website while we are building out the website before it's gone live. But then once we actually make the switch, it's live, everything is ready, we're excited, we forget to go back and uncheck that box. And then this whole time, Google is not indexing our pages and we're trying to figure out why. So there you have it. Those are the nine most common web design mistakes that really hurt your SEO that I see. Let me know if there's any other mistakes that you think a lot of people tend to make that you have experienced. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.